and today's live is very very special it's extra special because i'm almost uh, like i'm hosting somebody that i really look up to he's a phenomenal person he's an author he's a leader he coaches leaders and he is just just amazing and usually i try to memorize the introduction but his introduction is so long that i actually had to write it down here so i'm going to read this out to you and then we'll start so today i'll be hosting dr radha krishnan pillai and he's a phd in philosophy uh, from the university of mumbai he's trained many leaders in corporates academics and military and uh, he's done extensive research in kautalya's arthashastra and he's also authored several books based on his research he's authored more than 15 plus books and he's a certified uh, management uh, consultant in iim he's uh, authored books like uh, corporate chanakya in the year 2010 and it's been a best seller ever since then chanakya's seven secret of leadership chanakya in you katha chanakya which was also which was launched internationally in uh, new york then chanakya in daily life and anvikshiki inside chanakya's mind so he's authored 15 books most of his books are best sellers and he's a visiting faculty in i am iit and i am and uh, indian institute of science and he's also got the loknath national educational award as the best professor in philosophy and uh, top 30 indian management thinkers globally by thinker15.com so that's a very very long introduction and he's actually a phenomenal person so welcome to my uh, page it's so exciting to host you i'm really really grateful for you agreeing to come live with me it's a very very good feeling and i've read your book corporate chanakya and it's amazing it's phenomenal and i have prepared a few questions from for you and these are a few parenting questions that i get all the time and uh, but we like your uh, view point your thoughts about these questions and how you can use your research on uh, uh, chanakya's arthashastra to actually uh, explain all of this to us so really look forward to this and before we start i would just like you to address the audience and uh, tell a little about your journey to us uh thank you so much riddhi for getting me on this particular platform it's an honor to speak to you such a very famous person in the parenting field uh my background is uh, i'm happily married with two kids and the first thing that i like to do is you know uh, talk to everyone about how to be a good human being i think that's the first thing right. the sec- second thing is of course my subject has been chanakya and leadership so because of that i've been fortunate that you know i've been able to write so many books travel across the globe so primarily introducing myself there are three roles that i play you know one is an author everybody knows me as you know chanakya book author the second right. thing is basically i am an academician i had a uh, institute in the university of mumbai called the chanakya international institute of leadership studies and the third is i have a company a consulting company where we mentor a lot of leaders so this is my short introduction riddhi right Thank you so much. So let's begin because I don't want to hold you for too long, and my list of questions is pretty long. So the first thing that I want to uh, ask you is how do we speak to our kids so that they listen, and uh, what is the age appropriate way of actually talking to our children? So I think the best way to make the kids listen is actually listen to the kids. Right. And you know. it's it's very important that you know somewhere parenting uh, is almost like a traditional method you know my father right. taught me so to so to beat my children or my mother taught me this way i have to t- teach my children also like that i don't think that's the right method every generation right. has to improve its parenting and the parenting is such a wonderful journey i'll tell you a small uh, uh, you know quote that i read about parenting somebody said very nicely that uh, before becoming a father i had six rules of how to bring up children and now i have six children and no rules <laughs> so the whole idea about parenting is about it's a very unique experience even if you have identical right. twins every child is unique so i think uh, the best way for them to listen is to actually show them <laughs> what we call as a role modelship 
So we need to be a role model. The simple thing is that if you want children to read books, first you start reading books. Yes. If you want children to study, you start enrolling yourself in a course and you study. So children don't listen to you; children watch you. So it's very important to be a role model parent. And before you tell, do it yourself, and they will definitely listen to you. Right, right. And the next question that I have is, how do we control our anger as parents? You know, like a lot of us know that it's not good to lose our calm. and some of us you know really and not not some of us actually most of us really want to stay stay calm around our kids but sometimes we just lose control and we snap and we shout sometimes you also end up hitting them so what is it that we can do to really control this thing so i think getting angry in parenting is good so i okay. feel that it is always good to be a little bit angry but to get controlled over by anger is not good so you know in fact chanakya says that you know for the healthy society you need to have something called as dandaniti dandaniti yes. means using of punishment so if you are able to control your anger and keep the anger to the optimum level that is fine let me tell you children also understand when the parents are angry because they are actually right. good face readers they can look into your eyes and say oh mama is angry now and papa is <laughs> angry now so I better keep quiet but the problem <laughs> comes when you know they say you know always she will get angry always she will shout so i would suggest that you know use anger as a tool rather than getting carried away by anger so if you do it again and again and again they'll think ha ah, this is his or her habit you know so she'll always keep shouting so they will not have an impact but imagine a person who never gets angry and that person actually gets angry only once that is when exactly. the impact happens so yes a little bit of a patience little bit of a struggle is always there when you have to do self control no doubt about it but reduce the number of times when you actually express anger to your children and believe me right. they will actually understand your anger better than we understand ourselves right that's so beautiful and that's a very beautifully uh, explained thing because i feel that anger is something that we cannot get rid of it's something we can manage so manage the number of times that you get angry that's really nicely uh, put and uh, the next question and i'm asking you questions that the audience has actually requested for so next question that i have is how to deal with kids tantrums you know sometimes they know that you know if i throw a tantrum or if i lie down on the floor or if i behave like this my parents are going to give in so they are very smart they pick up on patterns so how do we actually deal with it what can we do to actually control it no so again chanakya strategy comes here it's called samadana danda bheda you know this is a very famous kind of a strategy where you have to look at the situation and then study and deal with the child in the children okay. actually deal with you better they are more psychologists <laughs> than parents so the children no agar mama se kaam nahi hota to papa ke paas jao papa se kaam nahi hota to dada dadi ke paas jao so actually they know how to get things done the right. important thing is that you know ki children will throw tantrums and if we get carried away one or two times they get into that habit and say okay if you want to get work done this is the way so there are two things i would suggest how to avoid tantrums number one use this tool of sticking to the no at least once you know we parents easily give up and tell that you know okay no take it take it but better be quiet better be quiet there should be one time You have to allow the tantrums to go to the highest level. Okay, I'm not going to eat food. Don't eat food. I'm not going to do homework. Don't go to do homework. I'm not going to actually, you know, go to the class today. Maybe the webinar class. Don't. And you'll be surprised because every time you are giving in, giving in, giving in, the child knows. He next time also he or she will give in. But you know, once you tell that, do doesn't matter. Keep your emotions under control. You know, we parents and especially mothers. You can fall into the emotional trap very easily. Right. So show them once that you know it's okay, but I will not give it to you. Next time they will be careful. So yes, you have to deal with tantrums, but show them that every time it will not work. So once you are right. firm, next time they will be careful about it. Right, right. So like basically set the right pattern and expectations for them. Very Absolutely. nice. Right, right. And the next question that I have is. like trays like 
you know there's this uh, a lot of talk are happening about praising our kids and how important it is to praise them in order to raise confident kids but uh, like you know how much to praise when to praise why to praise so if you could just uh, talk a little about that yes very very important praise and expression of love is a very important part of parenting so we need to tell the child that very good come on do it appreciate them give them some rewards recognition give them some gifts very very important but you know there is a fine line if you keep praising too much sometimes it can actually blow i mean make their ego look bigger so you know it is very very important to make sure that they get the confidence but let them not be over confident so this is where the thin line comes in if they are not praised they will lose confidence but if they are over praised they will become over confident and that is also bad so i think we need to somewhere let's say a child is always getting first rank first rank praise them but you know it's important to tell them listen you know you are first because of so many reasons not only because you are a good student you are great teachers and you know maybe yeah. the mothers are also contributing their bit to actually make sure the child is studying well so somewhere the question is to praise them but also keep them balanced at the mental level if the success right. goes into the head that is where the problem starts right so make sure you praise them but not so much that they become arrogant and they expect this from everybody else so keep right. it balanced right. is what the solution is right also we have this nice question in between which i'll take up how do we actually get to know that our kids are getting overconfident very lovely question because you know children's behavior is something that we have to keep watching and observing So if the child is overconfident then you can see right from the body language the way they walk the way they talk you know the way they express themselves an underconfident child also expresses through the body language so if a child has lost confidence he or she will isolate himself or herself sit in a corner not eat food they'll be socially very uh, non interactive with other people so you have to be a good observant of your child's moods and behaviors Yes. if you find the child is actually getting a little bit more arrogant we need to pull them down also a little bit so yes right. they have to be confident but the moment they are over confident that's a problem you know we did a small exercise for parents uh, and children of course you know and then we told you know please express low confidence over confidence and right confidence because oh, wow. the low confidence is not good over confidence is not good but right confidence and one child came up with a very nice drama and so so you can actually show confidence by the right posture so he showed this like this so if you are in low in confidence your body language will be like this you know low right if you are more confident you are like this but your right confidence your shoulders will be balanced so right. think about it you need to have the right confidence to make the child grow and be a good parent right right it's so beautiful and uh... the next question that i have which i feel that your research will really help us with is hitting kids okay like you know can we like sometimes go to the extent of actually hitting them when we lose our calm and will that have a really uh, negative impact on their growth and development and this is I a very debatable thing no 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 hitting kids is good <laughs> okay <laughs> in fact chanakya says this also that you know if you don't punish the child okay then the child can get into the whole uh, frame of of mind you know chalta hai attitude kind of a thing but at the same time while hitting the children you have to also know that it should not be hurting beyond a point and you know hitting the child is not just physical it also can be emotional and mental okay so or as they say you know okay, there are this uh, uh, parents who are born in india but are raising children in probably america or developed countries so you know they have been brought up in a way where their parents hit them slap them a little bit and all those things and then they go to probably us and they are very afraid of hitting their children but the moment they come here for a vacation they get down at the airport and give the child one little chapa <laughs> you know now i'm feeling very happy that i'm a good mother so the whole idea over here is that you know use the hitting and the punishment discriminately don't try to do that you know what it's not good because then they'll get into fear psychology then you know it's not good because you know it can be emotionally hurting physically hurting but i'll tell you know children also love to be actually punished a little bit 
you'd be surprised i know of his story i know of his story when a girl actually went to the mother and you know she was expressing something and all those things and her mama told you know that you no know, beta 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 and you know the daughter actually hit the mother and the mother got very upset i have never hit you in my life and you know what the daughter told mama you always tell me when i have come with a problem that you know please consider your mother as a friend and the daughter tells her mother i don't require friends i don't require friends because i have too many friends i actually require a mother in you who will correct me when i'm going wrong so wow. please understand yes even children know that there is somebody who will correct me if necessary even hit me a little bit but that hitting and the uh, uh, is not out of frustration or anger or some you know revenge so when you hit some enemy that hitting is very different you are having that you know whole thing that you know chhodunga nahi you never do that with children mm-hmm. so a little bit of a hitting is actually the joy of parenting enjoy that but don't trouble them too much okay also uh, one uh, question which is a follow up of the same question till what age can we actually hit them you know because after a certain point i feel hitting should not be allowed so till what age you know like they you mentioned that hitting is okay sometimes but when can we start and when should we stop this uh, process of hitting no i think hitting should continue life long <laughs> okay but 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 it moves from physical hitting to emotional to intellectual okay so let me explain that to you so when you are a small child you know you can physically correct them pull them and all those things but then when they become teenagers you can't use physical force but that is the time you have to hit them emotionally say that beta mm, okay so that's also hitting but that's not with the rod in the hand but that's right. that listen you need to discipline yourself okay as you grow bigger especially when the child becomes a father <laughs> when you become a grandfather that time also hitting is required and saying that you don't understand about parenting okay so i think what moves from a physical hitting to actually mental and emotional and intellectual believe me it is said in our shastras it is said in the taitri upanishad aitri upanishad so many of them saying that you actually become a complete parent only when you become a grandparent Is you it? become a complete parent when you actually become a grandparent it's a truth because you need to correct your children who are also parents because they may not know parenting so i would say you know hitting means actually correcting hitting is not just correct. about you know using your force it's also correcting discipline them directing them so i think correct. every child whether he is 6 or 60 requires some discipline and guidance right right that's really uh, beautiful and there is actually this question that i have here like the involvement of grandparents in the child's life you know sometimes there is a lot of this debate about parents uh, like the grandparents not doing what the parents want to do with their children and then the parents feel that you know the interference is way too much and that the child is not uh, growing up the way they want their child to grow up just because of what the grandparents are doing because grandparents have this excess love and uh, emotion compassion and you know they completely forget about their kids and they actually the focus shifts completely on the grandchildren once they become grandparents so what how can we actually respond to such a situation as parents what is the right thing to do so remember one thing grandparents could not actually complete their love with their own children so they completed with their grandchildren <laughs> so you know every time you want to pamper your child and all it's not possible because you need know, to discipline them but it's only when grandparents come around the childhood is actually complete so you now coming back this is actually not the problem of the uh, children or the grandparents it's the problem of the parents right okay it's actually the problem of the parents because between the grandchildren and the grandparents there is total tuning it is the parents right. who are the sandwich so i read some beautiful quote it said uh, uh between the uh, so uh, between the grandparents and the children there is a common enemy <laughs> okay so basically it is a parents problem so coming back please understand parents also know this that they require grandparents for the healthy bringing up of a child what you can't do the grandparents can do what you can't uh, actually you know achieve actually grandparents can do and believe me 
no family is complete without grandparents so the grandparents right. actually play the beautiful role of not only pampering them but actually teaching them values teaching them right. morals ethics so it's okay for the grandparents to spoil the child a bit you are the ones who will correct them remember without right. grandparenting no parenting is complete and without grandparents no children are complete Wow, so beautiful! That was beautiful, and of course, the grass is always greener on the other side. So, if you don't have grandparents, you want grandparents, and if you have it, then you have a box of complaints. So that's true. And uh, the next question that I have for you is that: How can we ensure that you know we are raising independent kids who are not always dependent, who are not always looking at us for approval, and can actually decide for themselves? What is it that we can do? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, I'll tell you what: uh, 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 you only will come to know whether your children are independent when they are away from you. So when they go out, maybe face the world, and especially they go out from the city or the place, and many times the country that you are living in, then only then you will come to know whether they are independent. Till that particular time, you have to train them, train them, train them. And therefore, Swami Chinmayanand used to tell very nicely: youth are not useless. they're used to less you okay. are not careless wow. they're cared less so i think what you should do is that give them small small responsibilities in the house that's a training for responsibility and becoming independent so you know maybe you give them 10000 rupees and say you know this time the diwali gifts should be bought by you so 10000 rupees is a big amount it's not a pocket money right it's actually part of your major family budget for so slowly what happens you are around and you can guide them so tomorrow when the child earns maybe 50000 rupees they will know how to be independently and responsibly use such a money so in our wow. leadership field it is said that if you want to make your child a king first give them a kingdom okay right. if you want to make your child a king first give them a kingdom so can you create some mini kingdoms for them saying that you organize this birthday party i'm there with you unfortunately we becomes parents forever even if the children are independent what we should right. be doing right. is actually become mentors when they are leaders so right, right from the childhood give them small small responsibilities you know i think most of the mothers know especially when they are training the girls you know going in the kitchen chala choda sa bana lena sabji then you know wash it out or serve it in the table i think what is very important is also for the boys and today we are talking about uni gender so i think independence will come over a period of a time steven covey in his book seven habits of highly effective people said something very nicely it seems that children go through three phases first one is called dependence second is called independence and the third stage is called interdependence which means when the child is small they are totally dependent you know they can't even move they can't even feed themselves the so slowly slowly you train them to be in- independent but you know what when they are independent and gone they will come back to you because they realize a grown up child also requires a parent that's yes. when interdependence comes in so to bring out the best in your child give them small responsibilities watch them let them make some mistake but if the bird has to fly it has to leave the nest that's so beautifully answered i'm loving this i'm learning so much and i love how you mentioned that if you want them to be kings give them kingdom so i feel that as parents sometimes we have trust issues and we cannot really trust our little ones and we cannot uh, trust that they are good enough to actually take control and take charge so again you know the problem comes back to us so we have to let go slowly slowly that's really really well put and uh, the next question that i have is uh, how to deal with fear and anxiety in our kids so some some kids have this anxiety issue like separation anxiety stranger anxiety sometimes they can be very confident at home but once they step out they get into a shell and you know and like these days i'm getting a lot of parents who are writing to me and they're telling me that you know my child knows everything and he knows uh, songs and rhymes but when he sits for his class he'll go like he'll become completely mute and he's not going to talk and it's impossible for me to put across to the teacher that my child knows it but he's not just he's not talking so what can we do to actually overcome all this very very interesting question and i'm going to give you a tip a suggestion 
which most of the parents will be surprised with start teaching your children meditation meditation is too small it doesn't sit in one place that's exactly why you should teach them meditation you know it's unfortunate that meditation is only thought about that you know it is something with spirituality and moksha no if a child can actually sit down for 20 minutes every day and watch his or her thoughts believe me they'll know how to not get carried away by thoughts what is depression what is suicidal tendencies what is anxiety they're only states of the mind right the same situation can be very very positive for one person but the same thing cannot be handled by other child and he gets into wrong thinking can you believe this i teach my children meditation they're too small you know they're not very big my uh, uh, son is in sixth uh, you know hardly fourth standard and my daughter in sixth standard they meditated every day for half an hour it's not easy you know because they are very hyper but believe yes. me believe me if you if you teach them how to watch their thoughts in childhood when they grow up they know how to detach yourself from the mind and not get carried away those people who meditate actually become very confident and they know how to deal with other person because they don't get carried away by their own thoughts or by others thoughts i know it's a little bit of a different practice but if you yourself as parents can sit down calm and quiet and watch your thoughts 20 minutes every day believe me children can do that and those children who can meditate are actually mentally balanced emotionally stable and spiritually evolved so start teaching that and you'll see the solution right right yes i think uh, after this live i'll get many questions how to start teaching them meditation so i will no teach them i'll teach them don't worry <laughs> okay yes and um, then this i think you've already answered how to dis okay but yeah like how to discipline so the question that i asked you was is hitting okay and the question uh, now that i have for you is how do we actually discipline our kids so you already mentioned by doing something like you know like my modeling the right behavior sometimes hitting is okay sometimes praising is okay but if there is anything that you would like to add yeah so it's very important uh, uh, in the south african culture it is said you require a tribe to bring up a child right in the indian culture it is said you require a village to bring up a child so i would say that you know in our generation unfortunately we are becoming nuclear families and you know it is becoming a burden for parents to bring up children and especially when you have one child and two child and especially highly educated parents why do you take parenting as a burden and everything on your shoulder it's very important that your parenting also expands and when i say expands not just to your parents and grandparents i mean your neighbors also part of parenting your masses your you know uncles aunties so i think it's very important to have group parenting group parenting yes and i'm very very clear on this that you know when we had uh, joint families the child would have actually three four parents of course the biological parents are there but what is very important is that the chacha ji and the chachi ji the masa ji and the masi were all parents and you know the mother could easily leave the child to the masi and say you know mai thode ghum ke aati hu ab dekh lena she didn't even worry when there was no mobile phones so i think it's yes. very very important to build a community of parenting so if you are saying in a society in a you know a township please create a parenting group and you know don't get very very you know attached to your child you know when we were a small you know we could just walk into the next neighbor's house and that auntie would give us food as if it's the own child she was to never differentiate so why are you becoming so individualistic on saying that my child versus their child i think let's call them our children so if you can create an ecosystem where parenting is also a group activity believe me believe me you know it's going to be fun less stressful to one parent and more important is that the children will understand what we call as vasudeva kutumbakam you cannot be calling your particular sibling as your brother and sister remember one thing the whole world is one family but at least expand from your immediate biological family to some families around you so create those communities believe me you will be less stressed and your child will grow more confident dealing with the other children as well wow that was so beautifully put and um, the next question that i have for you is 
things that we must avoid as parents what are those few things that we should consciously try to avoid as parents N- number 1 it is said never limit your life to your children because they are born in a different era a problem is that we look upon parenting from our lens it should not be like that every child is born in a different era you cannot tell them you know hamare zamane mein we had poverty <laughs> that's our problem <laughs> if they are born in a rich country and a rich family you cannot blame them so i think one of the things parents should not do is comparison with your childhood and the child's childhood right. the second important thing is remove two c's competition and comparison yes okay it's very very important because you know you look at parenting oh my goodness sharma ji ka beta and dubey ji ki beti oh my goodness but my child is unique so one is comparison number one with others the worst is comparison within the children you know your didi does that and you don't do that are your didi may have a different strength and you are you know bhaiya may have a different strength so i think stop 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 comparing and second is in a stop competition our education system is all about competition 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 stop it so competition and comparing can be replaced by two more c's cooperation and collaboration oh wow so can you change your children's attitude saying that it's okay if that child is different but collaborate that's what we do with our siblings right suppose you are a good singer the other person may be a good drummer so aap gana bajao wo drum bajayega so we need to understand we are moving from a generation of competition to cooperation from comparison to collaboration and let me tell you they'll become confident because then they are not facing the challenges of life alone in isolation they know there are friends they can depend upon so it's important that parents should not do this the third and the most important thing remember don't make worldly or material success the top priority for your children i seen so many parents doing this mistake you know beta padha likhna and then you know acha aadmi bada aadmi banna who told you that padhai likhai only makes a child big yes. okay yes padhai likhai is very very important you know i've done my phd my wife is done a phd and we're all working but remember it's very important along with the material success make sure they have character and moral values even if you're from a rich family it is said before you give them valuables give them values before you give them valuables give them values then only they will understand what life is all about that's what parents should do wow so beautiful and i feel like taking notes while listening to this i probably am going to listen to this again and it's wonderful and the next question that i have for you is uh, the stress during the pandemic that the parents and the kids have gone through you know like it's changed the life changed completely overnight and uh, it's not stopped still it's still on we've got into the mode where we've sort of accepted that it's there and it's going to be there for some time but mentally it has been exhausting for a lot of us so what is it that we can do to feel more relaxed and to actually act in this situation in fact this is the best thing that has happened to families i would not look at pandemic as a only negative thing you have seen this that if you can't go out you can definitely go in and if you are lucky to be part of a family where there are you know more than the first uh, and the second generation the parents and the children if you have grandparents around with you this is the best time that has happened so i would suggest that you know i know it's a stress because you know children don't go out and it's very irritating they are overeating i know of all these problems but i tell you one thing think about it after 20 years when these children look back what are the memories they going to carry like we have memories of our childhood you know and we said you know bahar khelte the and you know we used to have water which was not mineral water we had tap water but we look back and saying that you know there were challenges because i think most of us in our generation of parents were malnutrition we never had good hygienic food to that extent of you know nutrition value but when you look back and say you know that love of that mother while she cooking the food even in poverty was actually tasty so i would say that even in this pandemic we will definitely have our own challenges but make sure the children have beautiful memories okay so create memories for the future is what you should do 
two three things i would tell you that you know uh, children will be seeking a lot of attention because they can't go out they can't interact with their you know classmates they can't even talk to their teachers everything is on zoom and zoom is okay you know uh, internet and you know the 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 kind of uh, technology use is okay but the child you will have to take out some extra time you know yeah. parents used to feel very nice bachche ko school chhod diya to 6 hours i don't have to do anything but that's not the way you should look at it saying that maybe i'll have to spend 6 hours extra okay that's okay but the reality is that you know i will have to make sure i give that extra time it's only a matter of time you know the vaccination is around and things like that maybe one more academic year it's okay but prepare yourself think about it that your child is one year old what did you do remember when the child was just one year old you were totally focusing on the child because you know the child got all the attention right from free feeding to cleaning to make sure the child is sleeping well and if the child is getting up you will lose your sleep right so think about it that this is a second opportunity for all of you to give 100% attention to your child i would say that you know don't look at your freedom look at your commitment of parenting in the next one or two years and i'll tell you you know when they look back after 20 years these are the moments they will remember because while spending time indirectly you teach them lot of other things values family history maybe you just emotionally connect to them at a different level lot of mothers i know who are working okay and because of the pandemic they are working from home and they get irritated and say that oh no the child is disturbing me but think about the same mother who actually used to have a conflict saying that oh i am in office my child is at home so think about it you are the working from home you are also parenting from home along with the work so give your best it's only a matter of one year but this will leave memories and values forever enjoy the spirit of parenting rather than looking at it negatively wow beautiful create memories basically that's so nice and uh, the next question that i have is uh, mom guilt and this is like one of the most common questions that i get that you know i am a mother i have to do everything sometimes i don't feel that i'm doing good in any aspect of my life if i'm working i feel i'm not giving my 100% there if i'm with my child i don't feel that i'm giving my 100% to my child nobody around me is happy with the way i'm executing things and still i feel that i'm doing my best so you know like i'm she not sat- like we're not satisfied as mothers so what how should we really think to come out of this feeling of guilt so let me tell you as there is a mom guilt there is a father's guilt also dad's right. guilt okay not many people know this but i was a father i feel very bad you know the children are requiring me and i'm not around and before the pandemic you know i should travel almost 15 to 20 days a month so look at how much guilty i used to feel even though you know mother is the first person or the first parent to whom the child interacts with a lot but let me tell you parenting is actually feeling guilty <laughs> so everybody goes through it but what is the solution then you know it is very important to pat yourself from time to time you know when i used to feel guilty about you know uh, you know my parenting and so then i started looking at the positive part of it okay fine i am not able to spend 3 hours with my child when it is required but at the same time i could spend at least half an hour in the morning before coming out right so i will actually make a list of 10 things i could do rather than 20 things i could not do and i will give myself a brownie point and saying that theek hai bachche ke sath 4 ghanta nahi mila to at least 1 ghanta to mila so you know come out of this guilt is actually a mental state i'll give one small instance okay my mother uh, recently died 3 months ago okay and believe me i started feeling guilty and said that okay was i a good child so as there is parents guilt do you know there is a children's guilt also towards the parents so i was feeling okay did i do something wrong did i do something incomplete you know and let me tell you because i have lot of this self affirmation that i do with myself i telling you radha don't look at this other way your mom was happy with you right she is so happy to bring out a proud child like you she was part of the success that you got so i started saying you know, instead of looking at what you could not do for the mother remember those moments when your mother was actually happy with you then only you can come out of the guilt there will be always something that you will not be able to do always always so even if you have the money and the time you will still feel there is something i could not achieve that guilt will always be there but remember you should always count on what you could do in the limited you know circumstances that will what will make you count 
so instead of looking at that one not there and only 99 being there look at what makes it 101 so count your blessings thank your child but don't feel guilty come out of it by positive thinking wow so beautiful and uh, the last question no actually second last question that i have for you is how do we strike the right balance with our, between work and uh, our commitments towards our family in fact i'll tell you something working parents are actually more committed to the family yes. okay so a lot of people have this thing if i am working i'm not committed tell me one thing if you are making some money okay by working where do you spend it you spend it on your family right so why is it that feeling that you know ki working parents are not good parents or vice versa parents who are full time have this guilt i'm not working you know remember it's a choice whether you're a working parent or a homemaker parent is a parent nobody can change you i know of one of my uh, you know friends a very very different she she was a very very high flying corporate lady very high flying corporate and she always felt you know i'm not done enough you know and she resigned from a job okay her boss told her no 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 you work from home you do this you do that so you are not supposed to she was very highly performing lady she resigned the job came back she had two young boys you know what the two young boys told her said the mama do you know one thing when we talk to our friends in a school we tell them a mother is at a very senior management position we are proud of you so we are sitting at home we can't go and tell our friends that our mother is no more working so think about it actually speaking if you are working your children are proud of you you may not realize it because at that particular time you don't have to think thrice or twice to spend that extra bucks if the child is demanding something so it is not whether you are working or not working remember whether the child needs you whether you are there so if you can be in office in a board meeting and the child calls you up and saying that you know i am sick just tell the boss i need to go my motherhood role is very important than the corporate lady out over here so i think don't feel guilty but remember one thing your children may be proud of you if you are a working mother look at from that dimension also right this is very beautiful and in fact you know what you mentioned reminded me of something that happened with my son yesterday so yesterday he was making this uh, thing with blogs this new construction blog that he's spending a lot of time with i was like what are you doing it's like i'm working very hard to make this uh, building so i'm like okay working hard and why are you working hard like because papa works hard mummy works hard so i also need to be hard working and i was i actually felt good that you know he's noticing the people around and he's also trying to do what everybody else so he is also trying to be involved in something so what you said really is correct and the last question that i have for you and this is a question that i have for all uh, all the people that i go live with is one parenting tip that you have for all the parents watching this and who will be watching this after i save this live thank god for making you a parent it is the most wow. beautiful experience that can ever happen so whether the child is a boy or a girl or have some challenges doesn't matter okay whatever god has given to you as a child is a gift from nature enjoy parenting never compare never 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 when the child is in your lap that is the most beautiful meditative state that even the great rishis can't achieve so enjoy your parenting it's god's gift to you right this is so beautiful i am feeling so en uh, energetic energized and positive after listening to you uh, this was phenomenal i loved it and um, because i don't want to hold you for too long but this is something that i really want you to talk about so i've seen on your page that you do a lot of workshops for leadership for corporates for parents so if you could just talk a little about the different workshops that you host because some of us might be interested and might want to register for the same that's one and one other request that i have is definitely i'm getting you back for a talk on leadership and i'll be more focused on how to be a good leader what is it that you can do differently because as parents i feel that you know you also have to play the role of a leader somewhere and then like you said eventually become a mentor and let your kids be the leaders so we'll definitely do one on this but uh, before we close please uh, share a little about the workshops and the courses that you have yeah thank you aridhi 
you know i've been doing a lot of workshops and everything is connected to you know uh, topics uh, related to chanakya so chanakya and the art of thinking chanakya and the art of getting rich how to think strategically call anvikshiki but the one that we are currently doing uh, very soon is a chanakya and the art of parenting you know it's going to come up uh, this week itself you can check out our instagram handles and you can see the details let us know the reason why we do this particular workshop because i realize this generation is a very beautiful generation a great opportunity of parenting and we are doing this three day online where you know it's a evening program 7:30 to 9 you can just log in and i realize one thing this generation of parents especially the educated parents also need to balance out so of course using the chanakya techniques and also learning from the other parents so we are having this particular program that's coming up so anybody wants to enroll can check up the other aspect ready you know let's do this program as soon as you are ready i am ready for anything related to leadership especially for children a couple of things i believe that every child is a born leader every right. child is a born leader but the parent doesn't know that is the beauty because we train them to become followers follow this society norms follow that career follow this education why because our generation was trained to be a follower thanks to the british culture that was remaining but you know when you look at that child look at that leader in him or her whichever field he or she chooses is their destiny but you need to make them leader so i'm sure i'm going to be back here with you talking about how to bring out the leader in you chanakya believed that the mothers are the first creator of leaders the parents have a responsibility to actually bring out the leadership qualities in the child if you want to know the techniques let's have another instagram live looking forward yes, for one more discussion right thank you so much it was amazing and i'm so grateful that you did this for my audience and for me it was really really nice hosting you and i learned so much in just 50 minutes and i'm definitely watching this again and making notes thank you so much thank you thank so you so much can i wind up by telling with you you've been a wonderful host you actually yes. did something which is so close to my heart you've been you know uh, doing a lot of work on parenting my namaskars and pranams to you also yes thank you so much thank you thank you